Hello and welcome to another quick demonstration of the HPE ArcSight ESM solution. Uh, today I'm actually going to run through a creation of a very simple correlation rule just to show how easy and simple it is to, to use and build these things out. Um, as you can see here, we've got a, a number of uh, failed logout messages. In fact, if I just double click on those, we can actually dig in and see what's going on. We can see some data there. We can we can see that uh, from a Linux server, we can see that there's a particular uh, host name, what we call an attacker and a target, so where it's come from, where it's going to. Uh, and we want to write a very simple brute force rule to address this. So how do we do this? Well, actually, it's really simple and very, very straightforward to do. So I'm actually going to go to my rules there. I'm just going to right mouse click new rule. There are three different types of rule, but I'm only interested in doing a standard rule here. So let's just do a standard correlation rule here. Uh, we'll call this test brute force rule. And then we've got our conditions. So what are we looking for uh, in these particular events? Now, we've got a whole number of fields to, to look at here, but I'm going to look for some categorization information here that, that's relevant. So we'll just look for uh, categorization here that we're looking at, um, in this case, authentication verify. So we're looking for uh, whether somebody's actually uh, authenticating. And we want to see if the outcome, oops, the outcome is drop down failure. I haven't had to type anything. It's all built in there. It's just drop downs. But let's be honest, I probably want to be a bit more specific here. So in this case, uh, these particular log messages are, are coming from a, a Red Hat Linux system. So let's just target those specifically to those. So if I scroll down a little bit further, we can see device product. Uh, drop that down here. We can see Linux and I can see uh, device vendor. Drop that down. There. Notice how it automatically populates that for me. I don't have to type it. It understands what's there uh, because it's actually in the log message here. It's looking ahead. It's seeing that data and it's populating it for me automatically. Notice how it's created the conditions here. So it's and uh, categorization be uh, behavior, authentication verify, outcome is a failure, uh, device product is Linux, device vendor is Red Hat. Simple as that. I don't have to do anything else. What I want to do is actually I want to do some aggregation here. So this is a simple aggregation rule here. Uh, actually, I want to num have a number of uh, matches. So I actually want to have five matches. Uh, probably make it a minute here. Whoops. Make it one minute with regards to that. There's two different options we can use if things are unique or things are identical. Now, in this case, we want to make it identical. It makes more sense as I'm doing it here. So uh, I just add some aggregation here to, to, to show what I want to do. And I scroll down. And I choose uh, the attacker uh, address and username and the target address and username. What does that mean? Well, it means that the uh, username that's been used must be the same and it must come from the same source and go to the same destination. So it makes sense. It's got to be the same information to so that somebody's genuinely trying to brute force log into a particular user account on a particular server. So it, it actually details the summary here, but that's what the aggregation means. Uh, and then we go to the actions tab. And actually, it's a threshold. It's aggregation. So it's a threshold that we want to do. So in, in this particular case, I'm only going to do something very, very simple. I'm actually going to increase the priority to seven. Uh, these are green messages. They're actually a priority two. So I'm actually just going to increase that to a priority seven on the first threshold, so the first time it appears. And on subsequent ones, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that to an eight. So very, very simple. Increase that to an eight. Press OK. Uh, let's just uh, activate those two triggers. Let's clean that up and deactivate that one. So first threshold seven, subsequent thresholds eight. Simple as that. So actually, I just press OK. It's given me a little option here. It's looking at the rule and saying, well, in the aggregation, do you want to make that based on the uh, host name and the address uh, with the zone reference as well? That's to do with the asset model. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to do that, and you really should be doing that. But in my test example, I, I don't need to, so I'm just going to hit no to that. And then there we go. There's the little rule created. So the next question is, is okay, I've created the rule. Uh, what do I do with it? Well, how do I how do I actually put it into production? It's actually very simple. We have a little group here called Real Time Rules. Uh, what we do is I'm just going to cre create a new group in here and call that my new group. And all I now do is I take my rule and I drag and I drop 
into that group. Uh, I've got a few options here. Do I want to move it, so physically relocate it? Do I want to copy it, uh, so have two of the same name? Not a great idea, but you could do that. Or do I want to link it, so it actually has a, a link between the two? So if I hit link, it's the same one there. And if I made a change here or I made a change here, it would re uh, refer to it correctly there. So that's nice and simple, and I, I, I very much prefer that from a link point of view. The important thing is now is that the real-time rules are now active, and that's it. I've taken it and put it into real-time uh, uh, action, and it's ready to run. So that's it. It's as simple as that. Now, I do want to test that. So what I can do is I can just very quickly just send uh, some more log messages in. Just wait a second for the for the log messages to flow through. Uh, it is running on a VM, uh, so therefore it will take a second or two to actually uh, pop through. And there we go. There's there's the correlation that's occurred. Um, you, you'll actually see there's these other brute force rules have, uh, have occurred. They're the standard rules that will be occurring anyway. But um, I, I've actually just I created my own little rule here, as you saw, as I created a second ago. Uh, so that's what I'm going to look at here. Now, it, it, it's it's triggered a couple of times because I've, I've sent a bunch of messages through. Simple as that. And if I just double click on my correlation uh, um, event there, indicated by the little lightning symbol there, uh, I can actually see the correlation rule there, the, the name. In fact, if I right mouse click, it actually could go straight to that correlation rule there itself. But I can see the underlying log messages that correspond to that. So it's actually very simple, very easy. I've done a correlation rule. I've put it into uh, real time operation and I can see it fire as I feed the log data through. That's the important aspect here. I don't have to wait 20 minutes to or 30 minutes for it to actually run a search to do that and give me the results. I, I, additionally, I don't have to wait to then schedule to put that rule into operation. I could literally just run the rule uh, and test it and then put it straight into production without any uh, additional time or effort required. So it's a very, very quick and simple way of showing how you create a correlation rule uh, and how we use that as part of building out a sophisticated use cases within ArcSight ESM. Thank you very much.